Yeah, so I'm Sam Short from Short Marine. I own the business uh, with my brother Ryan, um, and we're a boat dealership, but we also run a fully, fully equipped one-stop shop service yard. Yeah, so it's a 2002 Blackwatch 26. Um, the owner of this, the previous owner of this boat, has just recently upgraded to a, a Grady White 271 Canyon. Um, it's been meticulously looked after um, ever since, but he just wasn't really getting much use out of it. So it's good to see it going to a, uh, a good home where it's going to get get a good flogging. So today we're, we're giving the thing a, a well-deserved birthday. It's getting a full anti-foul done. Uh, it's getting a full polish from the top down. It's getting the stern drive service and the engine service. And then sort of next week, I think we're going to start looking at some of the electronics and getting getting the Simrad fit out all sorted for you guys as well. The uh, the lift behind us is a marine travel lift. It's, it's got a capacity of 31 ton. Um, in terms of the hard stand area here, we can lift up to up to 60 feet. But yeah, how, how the normal process works is, um, you know, the boat drives into the slings. Uh, it's got some two slings that are lowered, lowered down into the water. Um, the guys will, as they're sort of raising those slings, they'll they'll make sure that they're, you know, positioned in the in the right areas, uh, and then they'll lift the boat out, drive it forward, and rest it on the um, on the blocks and stands. And so once it's been rested, the guys will actually go around and take a bunch of before photos. Uh, it's just a really good sort of visual thing. A lot of, our, a lot of our customers don't have the time to sort of get down here and see it while she's out of the water. So we'll go around, take a heap of before photos, email those off to the client, um, and then the guys will get stuck in. They'll get out the, the big high pressure, high pressure gurney and start blasting off all the shell and, and marine growth and oysters and all sorts of things that's, that's off the bottom. So yeah, once, once the guys give the, give the boat a good, a good pressure wash, um, the guys will climb up to the top and give the boat a, a full, full wash down from the top down just to wash all the overspray off. Uh, once that's been washed down, uh, the guys will then go around with some, uh, some hydraulic acid, which we, we all got a little bit of a wolf of before, uh, and that just gets rid of any of that yellow slime that sits just above the waterline or any of the, the, the rust that may come from the, the, um, the little fittings from the anchor, from the anchor well. Um, so go down and once they've done that and the boat's had a good wash down, the guys will probably take lunch, which just gives it, you know, sort of half an hour to dry. And then from there, we'll come in, get the masking tape and mask the waterline. Uh, and then once they've masked the waterline, they'll go around and, and, and identify any areas, like what the guys doing here, where, where there might be some, some white gel coat showing or any areas that need some, some, some sanding and some, some spot priming. Once the boat's been spot primed, then it's all sort of ready to ready to be anti-foul. Um, and then in terms of the anti-foul, most probably the most common anti-foul that we we'll use would be the um, would be the ablative anti-foul, which is what we're using on your boat. It's 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 best used for you know for people that use their boat you know quite regularly. It's designed to uh, as you're using the boat and the boat's sort of travelling at speed, it self ablates, which means that it sort of comes off, so you don't end up. Over you know over a few years' time, you don't end up with that thick caking anti foul. So that's what we've done today. Um, you know, if, if the, this has got the ablative anti foul on it, so you know we, we only need to give it a pressure wash. It doesn't need the full wet rub and wipe down because the anti foul is so soft as it is. You'll see, you can already see that we've blasted it back to the original primer in some of the areas, like it has at the front there. So. So once, once the guys finish rolling the hole, they'll head down to the back to the stern drive where they'll use a totally different anti-foul for that um, because the anti-foul we use on the hole has quite uh, heavy copper content in it, um, whereas you can't use that, that reacts with the, with the aluminium in the, in the stern drive. So we'll use a different type of anti-foul for that and we'll also um, spray that on. It's just, as you've seen on the drive, it's got you know, the, diff the hydraulic rams and, and it, it's quite a sort of fiddly area, so it's very hard to get in there with a brush or with a roller. So, um, to in order, you know, to ensure that we, uh, you know, end up getting everywhere, uh, the most effective use is, is to use a spray gun. So um, you'll see the guys, yeah, yeah spraying that that copper free anti foul on a bit later on today. And so that's all the anti fouling done. And then the last thing that we'll do is uh, is prop speed. There's a few reasons why people use it. It's like it's obviously more effective, but it also sticks a lot more. Like anti fouling props because it's spinning so much, it can can burn through it, it has struggle sticking to it as well and, and things like that. Whereas prop speed's a, uh, it's like a two, three part um, application process. We grind the prop right back, so grind the old prop speed off. Or if it was, if it was anti-foul, we'll grind the anti-foul back so we're back to the bare stainless. And then from there we apply the first coat um, of what's like a primer, which is the, the prop speed. Uh, and then we put a clear coat, which is like a, a, a silicon, silicon base, silicon-like um, 
material over that and you know people use that for many reasons um, you know I, I think first and foremost it, it, it does the best job at preventing marine growth uh, the silicon the silicon coat on top uh, just doesn't allow marine growth to, to stick to it you know we, we, you might get you know mightn't use the boat for three or four weeks and it'll start to naturally have that that um, you know marine growth and small shells start to grow on it but as soon as you fire the prop up because it's that slippery silicon base the stuff will just fly off so the best way to get long, longevity out of your anti-foul, believe it or not, is actually just by using the boat. Uh, the worst thing you can do for a boat, for many reasons, you know, especially when you start talking mechanical and things like that, but the worst thing you can do for any boat is just is not use it and, and let it sit there. As for Short Marine and what we're building here is we're trying to build out a, a, a genuine one-stop shop that's known for you know, premium, world-class servicing. Um, you know, we're, we're one of the only, well, as far as I'm aware, one of the only marine, you know, marine businesses in, in Australia that offers such a wide range of in-house services um, and that's something we've worked really hard to build so just knowing that you can come to the one place and, and you're going to have everything looked after and not only are you going to have everything looked after but it's going to be done at, at, a, at a world class quality and that's, um, yeah, that's what we're working really hard to try and build here.